as we go. And what do you do when your basement doors won't work anymore? Well, Chris is going to show us how to fix that. Stay tuned. When you have a vintage coach, one of the things you may find you will have to deal with is your doors start sticking or are hard to open and close. And part of the culprit is this little guy here, that little plastic plunger. They do break down, they do wear out. And it's, yeah, can kind of just be a problem. In fact, it got so bad for us, our sewer bay door uh, where all our gray tank drains are got jammed and we had to jiggle it open and all that stuff. So today we're in the process of replacing latches which you can either buy pre-made or you can rebuild. Uh, Rebuild's another video and our first step was to draw a template. Now we've got a 1998 Fleetwood Go ahead and point out the template. There's the template there. Chris is pointing to it, the little pattern he drew out. Oh, yeah. We had a little template because with the Fleetwood in 98 and probably other years, um, please, someone tell me, what the heck were they thinking when they put, buried that plunger underneath the frame of the door? Um, newer coaches, more recent ones, seem to have that mounted on the exterior where you can take it out easy. These ones aren't, so the template is there. So Chris uh, can go ahead and cut the hole, and I'm going to let him kind of take over narration as he works. Okay, well, <clears throat> to do that, one of the suggestions of somebody who is working with this is get a Dremel or another cutting tool with uh, the cuts similar to the Dremel. Um, we got the Dremel and we were able to use it for other things as well later on, so we found out it was a good investment. So one of the main, main ones we've been using is the uh, cutting disc, and uh, it comes in very handy for cutting these out. These are plastic backs. This is metal here, but we want to get around it so we can get into where there's locking nuts behind these, so we want to be able to get those out and then pull the, the old latch plunger assist, uh, assembly out. And then this comes off. We'll show you that in a little bit later. But first of all, we're going to cut these out and then uh, go through the steps we have to do to get it ready. If you're using a Dremel, I found number six. If it's a, if it's a 10 speed Dremel, it seems to work well. One thing you have to remember when you have a Dremel is you always, you should go, when, you, when you're cutting, go from the opposite direction of the way the wheel wants to push you uh, because otherwise you'll be having uh, jerks and stuff and you don't want that to happen. So anyway. Oh, I forgot one step. What I do is I take my drill and I cut corner holes. It makes it a little easier, though I could, I could skip that step, but I think I'm going to do that. So as Chris is cutting, um, it provides a stop point so you don't overcut. I mean, it wouldn't really hurt because you're going to put cover plates on later. Yep, left to right. Oh, one thing I might add is, you won't see it yet, but when you're cutting, inside the latch assembly is about that wide and it's just below here so you might want to be careful when you're cutting you can go a little deeper when you get to there don't go so deep if, especially if you want to salvage those to do uh, the rebuild like we're going to show you if you're going to put brand new ones in don't worry about it uh, brand new assemblies okay. You can go deeper back here because that piece that sticks out is only up in this area. So I'll just show you.
One thing is the you may wonder why this doesn't just pop right out is because there's styrofoam kind of gluing it, gluing to it, so to speak. So once you pry it loose, it usually comes right out fairly easily. So I just start it by getting in there, kind of separating the that material from there, and it should come right out. What you end up seeing is you see lots of styrofoam. You'll see the latch assembly. So we have to take the styrofoam out in order to get that out. So that's another part of the process. Here we go. So I just stick these up in the air, kind of to try to make a try to scoop it out. A lot of times it will come out easy and sometimes it won't. As easy as you'd like it to. Once you get the lock assembly out you can scoop more out, clean it out a little more if you want to. There. And then there's a few little pieces I try to be around the bolts, makes it easier to get your ratchet in later. Needed tools, what I use is the, and the, you know, the person that gave the instructions on how they did it, go get a U-joint for your your socket drive, and because you'll have to do that to get in there. And a long socket's fine. Uh, this this particular setup, they use the three eighths inch nuts, so three eighths inch socket. What I use in here are lock nuts, and I haven't had any trouble with them being frozen. However, what, what sometimes is frozen is where they're tightened against the door frame and that's frozen. The lock nut itself usually comes pretty loose. You can also spray some WD-40 in there if you think you need to too. But generally speaking, for being 22 year old motorhome, it, it wasn't too bad to get these out. You just have to get them started. Actually, you know what I'm thinking? No. Take this off first, take the lock off first, and then that's exposed, and then when this comes out, this comes right out. So I think what we'll do is take this off. That's a separate separate little step. Okay? Okay. Okay, good. Okay. I'm anxious to get these replaced with different screws because this was the loose one, one that was potentially loose. So the backing plate comes off, the lock is assembly, the mechanism is exposed, and I'll show you what to do in a second. We just pull these out. And the old lock, and by the way, we're replacing these, and I'll show those later or with the newer, newer locks. So that comes off. So what you're left with is the little pull arms that pull on the latches. The latches are spring loaded. The springs push against the latch plunger and the lock drawing it back in. Anyway, so now we're ready to pull these out. That's good. And you get that in there like that. Hopefully these should come out. Once you get it started, it will come pretty good. I use a ratchet screwdriver. Okay, you can use these little rods to help you pull these back. You can just pull yourself. This whole latch assembly is loose now. <clears throat> and when you get it down to here, what I usually do is turn these little rods slightly and then, then I can pull the latch assembly. There's the latch assembly. 
see <clears throat> over time <clears throat> these plastic plungers have a lot of work and then you start having to bang the doors shut and that's a good it's a shock on them <clears throat> and eventually especially the ones you use a lot these things will actually crack and break and then you pull this pull the door open that won't move and so you can't get that side of the door open and that's what happened to us checking to make sure any loose crumbs of styrofoam are out of there out of the way yeah, especially when you put these back in mm -hmm. cleaning up yeah. so in another video we demonstrated how to rebuild these this is our nice new rebuilt one uh, we yeah. will have that link available Basically. for you okay so I'll go ahead and put this one in so what you do is you have to well first of all I've noticed when I order the assemblies that there's they come this part comes straight out and I put a, a slight very slight bend in using um, uh, channel locks and I noticed the other ones were done that way it seems to make the hook action a little tighter I mean not tighter but a little easier more secure more secure when they come from when you order them they won't have that bending in it it probably works okay but I think well you know I think I'll do that oh. doesn't have to be a very big bend in it but I put it put first little bend I put right about there I'll make it just slightly tighter I used them for something else, so I lost my adjustment. There, so I go just a little bend. And then I go back a little bit and I do the same thing. So there's a slight bend in it, not a whole a big bend, heavy bend in it. I mean, it could be a little more if you could wanted. You can, can oh. Hold your hand behind. Yeah, just like that. Okay. So that's the little bend he's talking about. It's barely perceptible, but instead yeah. of being super straight, you can see that little bit of a curve, and that makes everything yeah. kind of hook up just a little bit more secure. Yeah, a lot of the ones I pulled out had that in it, so I think, yeah, maybe I'll add that to it. So you just hook that back on, turn it around. You can pull back a little bit, and then it should. Where you've cut the, the, uh, there it is, okay. Cut the door out, you have to, there. That should be. Should be in now. You can see the latch coming out of the frame there. And then you can you pull back. That should pull back nice and easy, which it is. Okay, that one's at least on for starters. There we go. Now I can use the screwdriver and tighten them up. This one already has a little bend that most of them had. Just be, make sure they're nice and snug. Not too tight, but snug. Okay, okay so those are on now. Looks like it's pulling out pretty easy, isn't it? Yep. That's what you want. Okay, the old, for replacing the locks, which most people may not do, but we decided to buy all new locks. You pull off the old gasket, it should come off pretty easily. The, the new locks have a new gasket. There's a partly a piece of plastic and some other material for the gasket. 
so that should be pretty much all you have to do there. Campground workbench picnic table. <laughs> okay, here we go. Um, what I like to do, since these are brand new locks, is put some lockies on the lock because the tumblers are brand new and they're a little tight. So, understandable. So, we want to make sure the locks are nice and loose, tumblers are good. Those guys are headed off to do to haul hay out to the wild horse herds. So get a little competition for sound. I like to recycle things, but on these brand new locks, these are threaded and you use the self you use self piercing screws to provide the initial threading in there. So I may end up recycling these screws since you don't see them there. As part of the cover plate assembly, which we'll show you later, there's you need four for per cover plate. And I'll use these screws, which are exactly the same screws size-wise width-wise to go in these holes here. So, I mean, if you want, you can pre-start the screws. So here's the brand new lock. There's a brand new gasket for it, which it comes with. Here we go, we're gonna put this on. And I'll try and remember to get those links for where we found stuff in the right. description below. Mm -hmm. So it should be pretty much sometimes you have to kind of work at it to get those in a little bit, which is good you don't want them coming out. Okay now those are in now you can see how this this works. You open the you open the latch it turns the assembly, cranks it, opens the door. So that's how that works. Okay, okay. Yeah. looks like main thing I have to do is hold the, pl the cover plate in place. Just because one only has so many hands. It's like, it, this is the hardest part, I think, of the whole thing. Just trying to get these lined up. Down. Well, Sometimes yeah. Chris uses a hole punch to help him line up some of those holes. They can be a little oh, clunky sometimes. Okay. I don't know if they can hold that perfectly still. I think we can get that in there. This is fun trying to hold yep, this. Yep, it's in. It's, it's in. in. Woohoo! Now i got to get the screwdriver out. Where did it go? What's over here? By the way, those screws are pretty common. Ace Hardware, here the local lumber yard had them, you know, they're pretty easy to find. Yeah, you can use the old screws too if you want, it's just that I kind of like, especially since they're Phillips head, having a fresh start. And then the, the cover plates you can use the old screws because there's not as much pressure on them. There. <laughs> How does that look? Okay, here we go. We're going to do it. Oh, that closes so nice. It opens. Close it. Yeah, the, the doors close so much easier and nicer when 
and you have this done. Okay, so now we're ready for the cover plate assembly. And before I shut the door and lock it, I'll make sure. So the cover plates we use are made out of FRP, and I forget what that all stands for. Um, it's also called dairy board. When we bought our initial rebuild kits from Improved RV Products, is that his name? Improved RV Parts, I forget. Yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. Anyway, well, well, I'll confirm the name, give you a link. You can see he's drilling some pilot holes, so to speak, just so it makes it easier to attach those and cover up that latch mechanism. Yeah, I'm finding it easier with FRP to have the holes in the cover plates already drilled. Think like switch plate. Those all come with their holes already in them, right? Right. Okay, so now I'm going to drill. I'm finding it also easier to drill pilot holes into the back of the door, tiny pilot holes, because they're styrofoam and it's plastic, so you don't want to get them too big because they won't hit the screw won't bite well. These were one of the cover plates and recycled them so it's a softer use for secondary use, secondarily used ones. It's to say almost exactly the same screw anyway. So those four screws are the ones that were holding on what covered the back of the lock? And we're just going to pull those over and use them on a cover plate. Right. Why not? Why not? I don't like to waste. Yes, reduce, reuse, yeah, but recycle. I also like, don't like having Phillips heads that are getting oh, <laughs> beat up. Okay, well, we'll put this one out nice and through right here. Once you get the uh, once you get the first hole drilled in there, it's pretty it's pretty simple. Okay, now I gotta. Oh, you hold. These holes are very easily stripped, so. Oh, I remember what I was doing. I forgot I that. I just kind of puncture the plastic, but don't go all the way into the styrofoam. But, oh well. There we are, that one's done. There we go. One of the important doors. They're all important. On our motorhome, it's finished. Oh, happy this is so nice. It's all set. So, so we hope you found that helpful. Do check out these other videos. Make sure you like, subscribe, share, and who knows, someday as we go, maybe we'll see you on the road. Safe travels to you.